Preparing a master for streaming platforms can be a bit of a daunting experience. And in my experience, there's often a lot of mistakes that people make that they just don't really know about and they just don't really think about. We've all seen videos, how to master your track. And that's great when you're talking about bass, middle, treble, compression, but that's not the whole story. That to me isn't mastering. That is making your track sound great. And mastering is more about actually preparing your track. So we're gonna maybe touch upon that kind of dynamic control and EQ kind of stuff, but this is how to actually prepare your tracks for streaming platforms. The first one is a massive one, and I see this time and time again. So picture this, you've made your track, you've mixed the track, and then you've mastered your track and you've exported it, and now it's going out. You've done the same thing for the next track on the album, you've mixed it, you've mastered it, and you're sending it out, but you haven't actually mastered it because what is mastering? Well, it's preparing for the next destination, preparing for, in this case, streaming. If you're not listening to your tracks in the same session, if you're not listening to them together, then you're not prepared. Because by the time you've closed one session and then opened up the next, you've lost all that objectivity. You've lost the feeling of what that other track sounded like. So the best thing that I know to do is take all your mixes, don't master them in that session, take them all out, bring them into its own master session, drag them all in and stagger them. So you have them all on separate tracks and you have them all after each other. This way you can quickly A, B between all of the tracks and you can make sure that they actually match and that they're actually prepared. Is one quieter, is one louder, does one have more bass, more treble, whatever it is. Doing this will actually help you to remain objective and help you actually create a master that is fit for purpose. On that subject, now that you've got all your tracks within one session, you can actually listen to the songs together. And I know that seems ridiculous because often people will do a inverted commas master and say, that sounds great, it's out. But unless you have them all in the same session, you can't actually hear them next to each other. So once we've got them in their own session, we're then thinking about bass, middle and treble and dynamics, but not just for that one track. We're not just aiming to make that one track sound great. We're looking to have a sense of completion for all the tracks. They all need to have the same amount of mids, the same feeling in the highs, the same feeling in the lows. And if we're not doing that, then we've just got five, six, seven disparate tracks that may sound great on their own, but when someone listens to all the tracks as a body of work, it's not gonna make sense. And that is what it's all about. It's about preparing a body of work, an EP, an album, a couple of tracks as a single, whatever it is, you're trying to make all these tracks sound like they were done at the same time by the same person and part of the same project. And if you're staggering them and listening to them as a whole in one session, you can be objective about that. Take a listen to the bass, middle and treble and dynamics of the overall tracks. Make sure your loudness is consistent throughout and you're gonna get a master that actually sounds like a master. I do a lot of listening for people, and by that I mean people will send me stuff and say, is this prepared to be released? Is this ready? Is this master good enough? And I can't tell you the amount of times that the track sounds fine, it sounds good, but it just stops, or it just starts with loads of silence. And this is really boring, I know, but topping and tailing a track is like mastering 101. If you've not got a fade at the beginning, no matter how quiet that initial section is, you need a slight fade because whatever's going to happen in the next transcoding process, you don't know. And it may be that it's not actually starting at silence. So a very, very small fade in at the beginning and then whatever the track requires for a fade out at the end is going to help your track really translate. Because if it just stops, it's kind of garbage. If there's a load of silence on the end, well, people are going to think, what's going on here? You need to make it finish in the way that it's intended to finish. And having a fade at the end is going to give you that creative control to allow your track to finish the way you want it to. And because you've got all those tracks in one master session, all staggered on the tracks, you can then listen to one going into the next. How is this track going to transition into the next one? You can work that out and you've got control over how your tracks actually transition from one to the next. Okay, streaming platforms, it's no secret that they degrade the quality of the audio. That's just one of those things. Until internet gets stupid, stupid fast, it's just going to happen. But knowing exactly how it's going to sound is really important. There's lots of tools out there like Streamliner from Adapter Audio or in the new RX11, there's Streaming Preview. Using these tools is very, very useful. 
having an inside view into how these different formats are actually going to sound is very, very useful. And knowing that the top end is going to sound different, that the low end is going to sound different, that peaks, transients are maybe going to be chopped off is so important to know before you actually hand off your master. So do yourself a favor, grab one of these tools. There are some free tools available that will do this and just get a bit of inside knowledge into how your track is actually going to sound on these different streaming platforms because it's not just going to be quieter, it's going to be different. And when you're listening to your track, how it's going to be on those streaming platforms, do yourself an even bigger favor and listen to reference tracks. This is a massive one. If you don't know how your track is going to sound next to another track, then how can you expect your song to sound great on playlists or compilations? You need to be aware of what the competition is and what the tracks in the same genre as yours are, where they lie on a loudness front, where they lie in terms of bass, middle and treble dynamics. If you can use that knowledge and bring a reference track into your door and master against that, you're going to have a much better inside view of what's actually going to go on. There's Metric AB from Plugin Alliance. There's about a million different referencing platforms where you can listen to your track next to another. You can do it in your door really easily. This is so important because knowing what your track is actually going to sound like means that you know what your track is going to sound like to your listeners. It may sound great in the studio, but until you've got that objective perspective on what it's going to sound like in the streaming platforms, you don't know what it sounds like. So do yourself a massive favor and get that information before you hit send. Those are five of mine, five pitfalls that I find people often make when they're preparing their masters for streaming. It's not just about making one track sound great, it's making sure that one track sounds great next to all the other tracks you're releasing and on that specific platform. Until you have all that information, you don't really know anything. I'd love to hear what your tips are for preparing for streaming, if there's something you particularly do when you're gonna be going to Spotify or going to Deezer, Tidal, whatever it is, I wanna hear about it. Chuck it down in the comments. Until then, I'll see you again soon. Take care.